Hello everyone and a very warm welcome to a very special edition of My Wednesday. I am joined by the man, the myth, the le legend, the Reverend John McClaw. You all right? I'm all right, mate. How are you? Yeah, not bad, thank you. Not bad. It's good to see you. Obviously, we see each other every Saturday, but it's normally just a hiya. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're uh, we're North Stand uh, veterans, aren't we? We are, yeah. It's been years now. So let's go right back to the start, John. Why are you a Sheffield Wednesday fan? Uh, I guess because my mum's family, uh, Mad Wednesday, I, my mum's one of seven, and there's a famous family story that my nan went dancing with players in the 30s when they brought uh, oh. FA Cup trophy back. Uh, so I guess my nan were a proto-wag, you know what I mean, before <laughs> wags were a thing. And then obviously my uncles were at there in 66 at Wembley. And then moving forward through years, my cousin Darren, um, my auntie Christine, my mum, uh, our, our Julie, my cousin, her husband, Gary, they all were like uh, avid Wednesday nights. And my dad started taking us. My dad's from Lake District. Um, his family, they're all Evertonians, actually. My granddad's brother played for Everton. Uh, okay. So my dad and his brother and all them, they're all like traditionally Evertonians, although my dad's been in Sheffield since 73, so I guess he's a Wednesday night now, he goes to matches. So I guess he's sort of, you know, by virtue of being here forever, he's a Wednesday night. Um, <laughs> but it's very much in, in sort of family tradition, uh, and I've been a season ticket holder. we a little gap in between when my band started. I've been a season ticket holder pretty much all my life, really, since sort of when I was about eight or nine. Um, you grew up this side of town as well, didn't you? So it's you know it's funny actually because a lot of music that's come from this city comes from North at City. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I'm thinking particularly of of Richard Orley, Arctic Monkeys, myself, Milburn, Martin Ware. We're all kind of from that side of town, although we all sort of come over and live in posh. Yeah, posh, posh bit now. That's it now. I mean, I said posh bit. I, I live on a like a, a pretty. You know, chilled a bit, a bit of a respectable road. It's not, it's hardly like you know, I'm not like surrounded by millionaires at all. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's certainly like posher than where I grew up. I mean, I grew up in Stannington and Grenham, my family's from Upperthorpe, so yeah, very much like centered around Wednesday ground, really. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's always just, it's just always been there, Sheffield Wednesday. It's a, a thing that both ties me to my past and my, my family traditions. But also to my future, you know, because I go with my little boys, one's eight, one's five. And it's a sort of, I'm not religious, and it's the sort of thing you can pass on that's not, you're not indoctrinating your kids, really. I mean, yeah, you totally are. Cause... Well, you, you're actually doing a lot worse. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you probably, you probably, you know, if you stood back from it and took a bit of a bird's eye view, you're probably condemning them to a life of misery, aren't you? Being a <laughs> yeah. Like, no, we love it. And, you know, we, 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 we have a real good tradition on a Saturday we like to go for a drink in Barrett Tavern and then and then we go on to match and it's great I love it and, and I feel very like connected to that community and, and to Sheffield Wednesday as a club and to wider city I guess really I've always sort of centred myself here and I look at older people like Richard Orley who stayed here had okay. careers here done it here and I think you can you can you can be successful and, and still live in this city and like I, I I've been offered at various times to go in boxes and all that, and it's not for me. I don't I, I don't go to match to like be secluded from people. You know what I mean? I like to be with people, and and you see, you said I just I like to be one of people and just stand on North Stand and have a pint. And that's it, really. So, what's your earliest memory then of supporting Sheffield Wednesday? Well, weirdly, my first Wednesday match were at Bramall Lane. All right. um, we used to play in a thing called the Steel City Cup before yeah. uh, be start of season. And when Wednesday played in Green Oops, we played yes. uh, in Steel City Cup at Bramall Lane. I want to say it were nil-nil. Dave Bennett were playing. Craig Shakespeare. I think Carl and Marty just signed. So we just we just signed CP. Um, Chris Turner in goal. Maybe Erste had just joined or maybe it's season after. So that were my earliest memories. I think I had that grey and purple away kit we had. I used to love yeah. 80s away kits there. Uh, and my cousin's husband, Gary, he took me. We walked it from Upperthorpe, uh, went under across Ponder, under Olin, uh, uh, Little Olin Road that they used to have. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and we stood on that like open bit that they used to have at Bramall Lane. We know on, they used to have a corner that were open for away yeah. fans. And it would have, I remember it being a a bright summer's day. Um, so that'll have been around time that we first started going. And then I, I, feel, I feel like I've got some recollections of going a little bit when Howard Wilkinson were here and Peter Eustace maybe. But okay. but in terms of being a season ticket holder and going, it went wrong with it at first time. That was yeah. when we started. We used to sit on Gangway here on North Stand, right near away fans. They uh, say that's right at the bottom, isn't it? Well, that's where all nutters stand, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so um, we used to go there. We used to sit there. And we, we got on opening credits a match of the day, actually. We played Tottenham. Uh, and we, 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 this is during time when, like, hardly anybody used to go on that bit at stand. We used to sit right at bottom, so you could see us on match at day on opening credits for years, which were great. <laughs> Um, and yeah, I guess, I guess, sort of fell into a, a good time for club. You know, this is a time when we, we've won League Cup and then obviously that, that great season under Trevor. So I guess we got it in as head. This were what Sporting Wednesday were, you know, top, top yeah. three and, and winning cups and going to cup finals and beating Blades at Wembley and, and how wrong we were, you know, we got deluded into got delusions of grandeur, I think. Yeah, I got dragged into it. So my first game will have been, I, I was only three months old, so it was 88. And I remember, like, I didn't get to go to Wembley or anything because at the time I was really angry. But now I think my mum and dad were in their 30s. They didn't want to take little and to Wembley. Like, they wanted to go and have a party. Uh, but, yeah, I saw I saw the good times. And then it's just <laughs> it's just kind of fallen by the wayside since, hasn't it? So when you talk about taking your little ones, maybe they get to see the worst bit. And then hopefully at some point... Somewhere well, I mean, I were very, I were very hopeful for this season because obviously, like, um, you know, idea that Barry might lift uh, trophy oh. at Hills, but first time since '59, and I think you have to sometimes take a step back from each individual season, don't you, and, and think, yeah. you know, longer term trend at club. With every reason to think we might push on, you know, we're, we have we're a big club, we've got a great fan base, and. Moreover than that, I just enjoy match day experience. We've got this thing that's like, um, it's a neutral thing. You know what I mean? And I sit there and wow. my brother's there behind me, our Chris, my cousin, our Tom. I've got me two boys. My dad comes. Me, me good friend, O'Hara, comes. We've got some great lads who we sit with, Matt and, and Louis, who just happen to get sat next to and We've become pals, we and their dad. And, you know, it's 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 like just an, a thing that we all share. It's not, don't belong to anyone or is it? It's like a, just a neutral space where we all go. Um, uh, and you sort of, you share ups and downs, don't you? And it gives you something yeah. to moan about or it gives you something to be buzzing about, you know? And I don't, I love it. I really do. And I, I, I love the club and I, I, the fan base, although it can be annoying at times. There's a real community with Sheffield Wednesday, isn't there? And, and, and I feel a lot of love from people when I'm at match and, they're very supportive of what I do with band and, and all that. So it's, I love it. I do, I, I, I adore it, you know. Not as much as my brother, I have to say. I mean, our kid goes, <laughs> he goes home and away. He's got a Wednesday tattoo. He's, you know, he's obsessed. Um, <laughs> although if I want to hurt him, sometimes I'll say, to, you know, if he starts getting a bit lippy and that, like brothers do, I'll say, little brothers do, I'll say, ah, but you didn't go to Wembley in 93, did you, when we played Blades? Because he were too little to go. Yeah, yeah. I went with a woman down our street, Diane. Her and Pete took me on this charabang. <laughs> um, took about eight hundred hours to get to Wembley, and I went, and he didn't go, and and he's still bitter about it now. I still am, honestly. The fact that I had to watch it on telly with my nana, <laughs> I was still <laughs> miserable about it. But then, having gone to Wembley myself at the age that they were, I think no, I wouldn't have wanted a little of here. No chance. Well, I mean, I still think back to that old match, and, and obviously. I'd invested so much in that. I mean, I were friends with Carlos. He's a good friend of mine, Carlos. And uh, I loved that team. I loved Ross Wallace. I thought he were amazing as a person. I thought he were brilliant. And Barry, Kieran Lee, I, I just... There were a moment before the army scored and I thought, this is it. This is like this club's coming back, this amazing... Because we are a sleeping giant, aren't we? You know, I think people forget football. I think we're in a coma now, Job. Let's be honest. <laughs> we've, been in, we've, been in, we've been in that state for a long time, <laughs> But it just makes you think, doesn't it? You know, if we'd ever do get back there, you know, you see what it was like last day of the season against Wickham that time. Yeah. You saw what it was like at Wembley, Brighton match, you know, and, and you think if we can ever get to to that place, it's going to be amazing. Because the oh. feeling it gives you, 
it's like you're flying in it, you know, and, and I want it, I mean, I want it for, like for yourself and our Chris and people who like, they live and breathe Wednesday and you think to yourself, you deserve it because you've, not only have you put a lot of time in, but you've spent thousands of pounds doing it, you know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, I mean, there's one thing else about you, obviously you are a Sheffield Wednesday fan, but you are also the Reverend from Reverend yeah. and the Makers and yeah. your album is out now, brand new album, brand new sound for the Reverend as well. I'm, I'm loving it. Yeah, yeah, so came out, tell me about came that. out. Well, it came out on Friday. Um, I'd kind of, I've never tried to make the same album twice. I think you've got to, obviously, second album's very different at first and, and then moving forward went a bit more electronic and then, I guess, a bit more retro and psychedelic. And this album's got a lot more in keeping with, like, maybe old soul music, but then the, mo the, the melodies are a bit more coming from a more modern place. Because I think a lot of... It's particularly northern male indie singers, they do like, oh, I've heard you do this song a million times. It gets uh -huh. boring quick. And you're like, oh, you do that lyric all the time. You do that melody all the time. And me, I've been like, you've got to switch it up. You've got to switch it up, you know. And uh, to some degree, found re-found me love of pop music. I mean, his first album, although it's obviously an indie record, we got lumped in with a lot of indie guitar bands at the time, and, and you look back, and it's a lot more pop oriented than that. And it's got synthesizers, which is a very Sheffield thing. Obviously, this is Burke oh. British Electronica in this city, right? So I kind of got a bit more back in love with some of that stuff. Um, and obviously, reaction's been great. We've had it. We had that big radio week. We were in the cold north. The, the actual song, all sorts of singles have been on radio too. New ones just gone on radio too. Um, so we've had a, a real kind of, I don't want to say a comeback because we haven't really gone away, but, you know, a, re a resurgence, let's say. Uh -huh. um, and I'm well, hoping, you, you know. You did the you did the big art exhibition as well, didn't you, with the letter to my 21-year-old self. That was something pretty special. Yeah, so, I mean, that song in particular seems to have struck a chord with people. This is me saying to myself, you know, when I was 21, look, you know, you, you did that well, maybe you shouldn't have done that. And, and I thought this concept's something that, I think applies to a lot of other people. So I, I opened it up and I got letters from like mental people like Sporty Spice wrote me a letter, you know, <laughs> Brian Eno, Jeremy Corbyn, Joey Barton, Neville Southall, LaRue, Libertines. I had like all other MPs, like crazy people writing me letters. And we, we displayed them at Fagan's. My, my friends have recently bought Fagan's pub in town, old Irish legendary boozer. So I, I displayed all letters there and then there's there's, also going to be a podcast where people come on and read the letter to their self. Um, I recorded a great sort of pilot episode of that with Nick Banks from Pulp recently. So it's a real good concept, I think. And weirdly, the only song I've ever felt like emotional in writing, I got, I got a bit teary when I was doing it because I've been doing this music thing a long time and I have. I've made a lot of mistakes, you know. I, I could have oh. been a lot more successful if I'd not been stupid at times, you know what I mean? And Equally, I'm saying to myself, you're all right, mate. You don't, you know what I mean? I think sometimes you've got to give yourself a bit of credit and all, and there's a lyric in there that says, be kinder to yourself, because I can be my worst critic sometimes. I'm sure you know what I'm on about with that. You can, you can, oh. you can be incredibly harsh on yourself. Um, so, yeah, it's a good concept. And I think also, obviously, lyrically, I'm always, always have done, wrote from a very honest, personal position, whether that's living in Sheffield, growing up in a working class, community and talking about all characters there or just talking about myself and what I think and what I feel. I feel like a lot of music to me, if it's not based in reality, it's sort of invalid in some way. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah, I definitely. Think, I think you are a poet, aren't you? That's the thing. You are a poet. I did start as a poet, yeah, but I think also we in Sheffield, we take lyrics, there's almost an increased focus on lyrics. You know, this is City of Jarvis Cocker, right? And, oh. and of Alex Turner and obviously we're very much steeped in that tradition of, of, of lyricism. And I think it, lyrics almost have more importance in this city than they do it, maybe in Manchester or Liverpool or London or Birmingham. We, we're a bit obsessed with words, aren't we, in Sheffield? Oh. It's, a, it's a real thing, isn't it? So I kind of carry that tradition and, and I see that tradition being taken forward by a lot of new artists who are coming through. Obviously, Rayton's are smashing it now and... There's a bunch of like young artists below that even who, who I see them like really thinking about the lyrics, you know, and, I, and that's great. I think it's something that sets this city apart from from other places, you know. 
So obviously you're on tour at the moment. You keep popping up in different car parks and in different people's houses. So how's that going for you? Is that busy, crazy? Amazing, yeah. I mean, I've always done this thing when I go outside with my acoustic guitar after my big shows, with my full band shows, and then I just tip up in people's houses. I say, can you get a load? Can you get your house full of people? Like, yeah, no, worry, I'll sort it. And I think, like, it's very hard in music to have, like, a, I don't want to say USP, but have, like, a thing that nobody else does. And it, yeah. hardly anybody else ever does it. And what I've noticed now is you're getting these young bands. There's a band called The Chase from Nottingham. And they've started doing house parties. Another night where we won, there was a girl called Harriet who's from Barnsley and she was here and another lass called Ruby J who's a young up-and-coming artist. And she. So I've got other unsigned artists on with me at these house gigs and I think it's just a, a way of getting away from that like corporate thing where everything's like 28 quid a pint and you're herded around like cats and, and security are right heavy. And it's just, me, I think it's more of a tradition that... It, you see it in Deep South in America with country music and blues music. They do it on porch or in house. Mm -hmm. And I think Northern indie music, for want of a better phrase, is be almost a bit like that. It's it's working class music and it's it's in people's houses and it's a bit sort of more in keeping with what I would think spirit of rock and roll is. Because I think that we've got a long way away from that, haven't we, as a, as a culture, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, obviously... There's the one song that's going to follow you around forever. Does it does it ever get repetitive on tour singing Heavyweight Champion? Or do you still absolutely buzz for it? No, nah, because it's a banger. And I think, like, any band, if you closed your eyes, you'd be able to name, like, one tune that's, like, the biggest one. Realistically, when, when you come and see us live, it's not... You would think it would be the biggest tune, but it's not. There's a tune called Silence Is Talking, which... It's got like a trumpet riffing, and that's the biggest one. Yeah. Um, but that's equally, it. like, who was, the, who was the player that they turned that into a champ for? Oh, Wednesday player, uh, Juice Van Aken. Yeah, Juice Van Aken. That was yeah. it. Yeah, Juice Van Aken. I think that might have been something like that, which yeah. were great. You know, like that were great. And and I, equally, like if people only know us for heavyweight, what a great thing to be known for. You know what I mean? And obviously, there's <laughs> below that. There's like thousands of people who are writing a properly into band on a, on a deeper level and then there's probably millions of people who just know that one song whatever you know what i mean like i'm at me I'm, i've been in a band 20 years and i probably hopefully i'll do it forever and i think like if it can keep you in bread and keep you working i mean mate went to see radiohead and they didn't play creep what? He paid 70 quid to see him and you're like what are you doing lads like just you don't have to be miserable about it you know what i mean like and yeah, you get to Hillsborough Tap on a Wednesday night. There's a bloke who does it every week on karaoke. There you go. There <laughs> it's you not go. a karaoke song, but he does it. <laughs> I think you've got to like, you think of like films, don't you? And if you thought of like Marlon Brando, you'd think of Godfather, despite the fact yeah. he's been in loads of really good films. you got to lean into it. you got to own it. You know, it's my song. I wrote it. You've got to lean into it. I think, I think sometimes when you try and resist things, I mean, you've got to think I've been known as a lot of different things over the years. I've been known as like Sheffield fella. Alex Turner's mate, <laughs> Gob Almighty off Twitter, Jeremy Corbyn's mate. You know what I mean? I've been known as a lot of different permutations, but you've just got to lean into them. You can't, like, resist these things. You've just got to be like, yeah, fine, no worries. And, and kind of, uh, you know, I mean, you look at Barry Bannon, right? You would He's played for other clubs, but you mm. know him for Wednesday. He's a Wednesday boy. He's a Wednesday boy. Doesn't mean he hasn't played for other clubs or he hasn't played for Scotland or he hasn't done other things, but... You're going to be defined by certain things, I think. And I think you've just got to own them and put your arms around it and think, yeah, I'm proud of that. And that were great. You know what I mean? How is it? Well, there's probably a different answer from your lovely wife, but how is it being in a band, working with your wife, touring with your wife? How how does that reflect on sort of your relationship? And, you know, do you ever just avoid each other for a week after a tour? Or is it? Yeah, we, we even now, like, she's downstairs practicing for uh, a bunch of, like, gigs we've got coming up. And I'm up here talking to you, and I think, like, it can be difficult because we'll get in bed and we're talking about work, and there's sometimes yeah. you've not got that. You have it with music in general, you know. There's not that, like, switch off, whereas, like, I go to, I go to match with our Tom and he works on bins, and when he's finished on bins, he's not thinking about bins. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's not. He's thinking about, he's thinking about like, Wednesday or his missus or his mum or whatever he's thinking about, right? And I do sometimes think, I'd like that. I wish I could mentally just put it there, right? And you can't because I'm it and it's me. 
and we, yeah. we're one and the same, you know, we're, you know, we're linked forever. Um, and even like the Reverend, it were a daft nickname what Andy Nicholson gave me out of Arctic Monkeys once, just joking around. And here I am 20 years later, and it was like, all right, Rev. And I'm like, oh, it still, <laughs> to some degree, feels like another person. Like, oh, the, who's he, Rev? I'm John. You know what I mean? But you, like, like I said on that previous answer, you've just got to lean into it and own it and, and accept that it is what it is. And there's there's upsides of being in a band with your wife and there's downsides, but I wouldn't swap it. We've had an amazing life. We've been all over the world. I've been in 50 countries, me, you know, and I'm working class lad from Sheffield. So you can't sort of, you have to just take rough with smooth, I think. Definitely. So you're saying about being known by different things. The one thing you haven't mentioned there is Mr. Paul Samson, first oh, yeah. team manager of the Royal yeah. Oak Football Club. <laughs> How yeah. did that come about? How have you got dragged into this? So basically me and our kid, when we were kids, we'd always tech off football managers at presentation because <laughs> he were managed by uh, Rob Rowley, who's dad of Tom Rowley from Arctic Monkeys and, and Milburn, and Ian Carnell, who's the dad of... Uh, the Carnal Brothers from Milburn. So we used to take them off, you know, like do impressions of them because they, they were a bit like, they were funny characters. And my manager's an old uh, fella called uh, Andy Poulton and another lad called Dave Crooks, who I still see at match, actually. So we used to take them off, just just doing like, pretending to be them on mic at presentation night or whatever. And our kid, because he's so funny, he were, he, he's like, I like to think I'm like, relatively witty but he's really funny at Chris and he'd just have us all in stitches so one day we've got this friend we had this friend called Sean Grant who's a filmmaker uh and Sean were like do it for real let's just film it and put it on the internet and he did and it went mental and then Chris has probably been I mean I know he's been on your podcast and he's talked very openly about all this but he he, he was sort of plagued by a lot of personal problems at Chris which mm -hmm. he's sorted out and he's like beautiful now he's, he's amazingly successful and and since he's sort of been a clean living guy and whatever, he's just this project, this Bracknell thing's just flow. <laughs> and because I'm his brother, I can play it, I can play it straight man. My character's a straight man. He's actually a manager, isn't he? And Jack is <laughs> that Bracknell who's only assistant, like completely takes all all the time. And like uh, what's hilarious is is I've started managing markets footy team, right? So uh, he plays for Ecclesaw Rangers, which is the club of Little Man Tate, John Windle. Uh -huh. uh, and I'm meant to be manager, but like, there's a bunch of us do it. And you see us, we're like repeating all them cliches and you think, oh my God, what are we doing here? Are you like, telling us to get our elbows out? <laughs> but I mean, what's, what's mad is now is, is obviously I'm known for band and whatever, but you get some people who like, they know me for that instead of instead of for, them, for band, you know, um, which is mental. And I think, I think hopes is obviously to get it on telly and Chris is well on with that development and he's doing really well with it. So I'd love to see it. I'd love to see it on telly because I really, I mean, I'm obviously biased because he's my kid brother, but I think our Chris is a genius. I think he's, he's, he's an incredibly funny, you know, articulate and intelligent person. And, and I'm hoping it can get to where it needs to get to because, you know, people love it. They do. It's really popular. Eh? It's mad, isn't it? Because I see it like, I've been on YouTube pretty much my entire life on and off. And I still see Paul, uh, Steve Bracknell as a completely different person. I just can't. It's just weird. It's when, he does, it's when he does that, it's when he does that with his mouth. <laughs> but you see, my my, oh. my little boy, he's only five. He's called Reggie. And he, he does an impression of Steve Bracknell. And there's one Bracknell when he's on about, they've been on holiday to Greece, some at lads. And he, he says, your, head, your mind's still on holiday. He says, it's already <laughs> eating pork gyros and supping mythos. And my, my little lad don't quite know what, like, mythos is, so he's like, it's all right, isn't it? Uh, geared off, on ethos, hard work starts today. And he does this thing, like, it's like a parody of a parody, but it's so, <laughs> like, it's so funny. Um, but no, I'm, I'm very proud of Chris. He's, he's you know, he's, he's done amazing. And I, really, he's got more characters other than Bracknell. And, and I wish he'd just stand up because he's... He has us in stitches, like obviously I'm in loads of WhatsApp groups with because he's I would say he's you know one of my best friends as well as my brother. Um and he has us in stitches, honestly. So it, it, I have to say as well, our Tom, my cousin who sits with us, who I mentioned earlier, he wrote some of Bracknell episodes, the one where the the serious one where they do it mental health. Yeah. And another one where Tom had sort of written the episode and, it, and he's I don't he's he's almost like you know, like Craig Cashware in Royal Family. He's yeah. he's like a big part of it. Um 
And if I don't want to like uh, skim over Brackman, we aren't mentioning that Tom because he's he's he, in his own right, he's hilarious. He just probably lacks confidence. Me and me and I kid are big heads, aren't we? So we're always <laughs> confident. Whereas Tom's a bit more humble, but he's he's really funny, Tom. So obviously that's that's a huge part of Chris's life at the moment. And you said your match day is with our Tommy, who's number nine yeah. for the Royal Oak as well. Yeah. And I presume Matty is Matty Wynn. And there's you and he's, he's a bit some he's a bit sometimes winning. I mean, obviously in Bracknell they're playing themselves, aren't they? And and Winnie's yeah. sort of uh, unreliability is very much like a part <laughs> yeah. of his actual makeup. You know, he's you know, you I mean I've known Winnie since I was eleven. We've been mates from kid childhood and you know them people who like oh Winnie, he's that yeah. he's that kid, you know. So yeah. So what is always... your match day routine with them? So we like to meet up at Barrack Tavern. Uh, we would have a pint there. We love them guys. Have a chat. We all staff and oh Kevin, little Kenny and all them lot and uh, Jones in. We have a pint there and then we walk down to uh, down to match. Go in there and uh, yeah, do his thing. Love it. And then sometimes we might even have a a beverage on way back. And that's that's pretty much it really. And and it, I love it. It's amazing. You know, it's it's like just. You know, something you can do that... I don't want to say it don't matter, because it obviously does matter. We want them to win, but it, it's like... On a philo philosophical level, football, it's... me. It's, it's 11 blokes kicking a pig bag around, isn't it? So oh. it's like just good to go somewhere and just let out all your emotion, good and bad, and have a shout at them and cheer for them and all that. And I love it, and I, I think I, if you took it away from me, I'd be really miserable, because I, I need it. It's like an outlet. for It is for a lot of us, isn't it? You know, it's just a place you can go and express yourself yeah. and feel like I don't want to say it's re this is going to sound massively over I'm like I'm over egging it but Christianity is gone in it in this country no, religion's gone it's like a thing where we can all go somewhere gigs are a bit like it me and you can stand side by side at a match and we can do you believe in it and I believe in it and yeah. we might have a lot of these people you might have no else in common with them, but we've got that and it, it keeps you together binds you to other people it's like a a unity thing and and obviously we used to have that in this city with steelworks and trade unions and pits and all of that's gone on it so it's like a it's like a something from a bygone era it's like a oh, i can just stand shoulder to shoulder with people and we can be together for an hour and a half i, I think it's beautiful and when we sing io silver lining eve every single time airs on back at neck I, it yeah. does me it, it's, i could the thought about it i'd ruin I know that's, I'm probably because I'm getting old and I've got kids and stuff, but like I see my dad singing it, I see my little boys singing it, I see our kids singing it, and our Tom, and I'm like, whoa. I think it. my mum's one of the only people around us. She's 67 this year, old Babs, and she still stands up and puts her arms in the air and she still does the last one just as they kick off. And yeah. I'm sat down going, Mother, and she has to do it. It's just, it's in her blood, it's what she does. Yeah, it's it's it, it makes you think of like people who aren't weirds anymore. Makes you think maybe one day I'll be granddad and and my kid, I'll be going with my grandkids and yeah, like it's just a it's it's about tradition. It's about it's about football. Still a very much a working class sport in it, you know. And it's it's despite the people who own the clubs, it's ours, isn't it? They can't take it away from us. You know what I mean? It belongs to us, and club belongs to us. You know, it might say. Mr. Chancery on deeds, it might, he might, but it's not his, is it? It's ours. He's only a custodian, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? It belongs to all of us, and we're what make it. And and I oh, love it. I just, <laughs> I do. I, I just love it. And like, even when I'm at home, I'm on footy manager, like pretending I'm Wednesday manager, doing me Darren Moore bit and that. You know what I mean? I've, I've like won loads of Premiership titles now, and I'm, I live and breathe it. I do, and and like, I think what would be amazing for this city is to enjoy some good times because it's been it has been tough and it last i mean you've got people now who are good at match who are 25 year old and they can't remember yeah. good times and that's i think as a community we deserve we deserve some joy we wednesday it would be nice wouldn't it <laughs> well john thank you so much for chatting to me today obviously the album is out now heat wave in the cold north get it i've put the website across the bottom of the screen obviously we'll put all the links out as well when this goes live so yeah so we're, we're open for a top 10 uh i mean streaming don't get us anything at all so if uh, you've any love for me at all if you could uh, if you're listening or watching if you could buy album and try and get us in charts i should be much obliged 
Thank you. The Wednesday Week is sponsored by Michael Constantine Wealth Management. We bet you can't find a financial advisor closer to Hillsborough Stadium. Blair, I've put you I've put you on specially. I've brought you on to the side to talk about men's grooming. Downstairs grooming. <laughs> well, as you know, I'm the biggest men's grooming guy in the biz today, Foot. Well, of, of course you are. Of, of course you are. I, and I know that you're a big gym guy. I know you're a big runner. And have you ever been out and about and all of a sudden you've got what can be described as a small fire down there? It's as red as a fire engine down there sometimes, Foot. Well, I tell you what, that's a good point, because uh, right now, the Wednesday week for the next few weeks is going to be brought to you by Manscaped. And we're giving away, well, we're giving away uh, discounts on the Manscaped 4.0 bundle. What's what's it include? I've got, it's the performance package, mate. Uh, You've got the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, Weed Whacker, yeah, a Crop Reviver toner. So, you know, it brings it back (laughs) if you need it. Uh, performance boxer briefs if uh, if performing is an issue for you mate I'm fully seated but you know <laughs> F- fully seated I-, I enjoy that yeah 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 so uh, and then we've got all, all the bits that'll keep it off the bathroom floor uh, we've got um, well it's waterproof it cuts down the um, the issue that you might get it helps reduce the likelihood of getting an ingrowing hair as well perfect and that's you know what I mean? a Gillette fan. In it, in it. So I thought you'd be a fan. So listen, you guys back home, you guys watching and listening right now, uh, you can get a discount on this if you enter the code TWW20 into the uh, into the checkout at the end, and you can get yourself a 20% discount. That's the Manscaped 4.0 bundle. Get on it. The Wednesday week is also brought to you by Michael Constantine Wealth Management. I bet you can't find a financial advisor closer to Hillsborough Stadium.